What's up guys, today we're going to be reviewing and ranking one of my favorite bands ever, Broken Hoops, main discography. So without further ado, we're just going to hop right into it because you know I like to keep it short and simple. So starting off, we have the first album, Swamp and Gore, and it's considered uh, the old school death metal killer. What I mean by that is like a lot of people will say this is the one of the first albums that really killed death metal in its early days and it's just generic, boring and bland nonsense and for that reason we're putting it in A because uh, that's what makes this album great. To me, this album was the start of the brutal death metal wave early on, and I thought it was way heavier than Effigy of the Forgotten by Suffocation the same year, and way less trashy than them. 100% um, more captivating to me than Cannibal Corpse around the same time as well. Vocals are uh, some of the deepest and lowest for the time by Joe mm -hmm. Fajek. Uh, the album art is quite stupid, I'll give you that. Of course, we're talking about the uh, Grind Career National version. Still have zero clue what's going on in it even. Uh, also, why did the Grindcore International label have no Grindcore bands on it? <laughs> but, anyways, Swamp just starts out so heavy and so disgusting. It has some killer songs like Incinerated, the title track, uh, Awakened by the Stench, Devour Souls, Goblin Guts, Dismembered Carcass. Like, it's just a great start for the band. Some of the most classic death metal or brutal death metal um, out there. Uh, so next we have the Bell's Repugnance, and to me that's the best Broken Hope album of all time. It's not even up for debate. Uh, don't even fight me on this one. If the demographic for Swamp and Gore was bands like Autopsy, Immolation, Incantation, Malevolent Creation, Cyanide, Obituary, then Bell's demographic is the Internal Bleedings, the Mortal Decays, the Scatter Remnants, you know, Torture Crib, Dead End, Despondency, Turkish Cenotaph, like... This album just packs everything great of what Broken Hope has on this disc without flaw. From its sections of short and blast with memorable sections to its instrumental breathers, this is just a great time. And if someone who isn't a fan of the more brutal and caveman style, as we like to call it nowadays, of death metal, I'd give this one a listen to. I mean, tracks like Embryonic Triclops, Coprophagia, She Came Out in Chunks, uh, Felching Vampires, my personal favorite Broken Hope track of all time. Uh, Remember My Members is on this. Just so many great tracks and moments where every song just shines. Uh, next we have Repulsive Conception, and this album is quite tough, honestly. It's a lot of people's favorites, and a lot of people also don't like this one. Uh, it's much slowed down and more groove-oriented. Groove-oriented. Groove, you know what I mean? Uh, then Bales of Repugnance. It starts off heavy with dilation and extraction, but you quickly realize uh, this album's a little bit more muckier and longer than Bales and Swamped. Um, some try and, sometimes tracks bleed into another, which causes slight boredom for some people. Um, I find that to be mostly on side A when I re-listened. I thought side B was just a little better. Um, it does have some goodies that not a lot of people um, who listen to the band like to listen to, like For Only the Sick and Freezer Burnt were always some of my favorites. I know most people go to Dilation or Necrosphere on this album. Um, to me, if the album production was just a little better, and the album just had a little bit less filler songs, and the title track was just like Dilation, Grindbox, Pitbull, Necrosphere, For Only the Sick, Freezer Burn, and the Instrumentals. It'd be like right up there with Swamped and Gore on its level. Um, Loathing took everything great about Bales and just made it heavier. I mean, this album could be the best album by them, but I think it's just a matter of opinion, to be honest. Um, I honest to God think, though, that this is one of the heaviest and most intricate albums that gets underappreciated. Right up there, along with Internal Bleeding's Extinction of Belovolence that came out the same year in 1997. I mean, both are just absolutely over the top brutal compared to the rest of their catalog, and I see, like, not a lot of people talking about the two. I mean, Loathing is just the perfect amount of technicality and brutality where it doesn't get lumped in with other technical, pure technical bands like Cynic, War Guts, and Necrophagus. And with the, technical, with the technicality part mixed with the brutality, it still stands right up there with bands like Despondency, Digested Flesh, and like fucking, I don't even know, Cerebral Effusion. Like it's that fucking heavy, this album. Um, tracks like Siamese Screams, The Cloning, and He Was Bleeped are just some of the staples that I think should be on anyone's brutal death metal library. Uh, it also has a really cool outro called Deadly Embrace. It sounds a lot like something out of Resident Evil to me. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could be the best. I think Bales is just like that little teeny bit more. But some days I prefer Loathing. It just depends. Moving on to Grotesque Blessings though, it's like the Chinese democracy or Saint Anger of Broken Hope. 
Uh, people say that since it was like a struggle in the band's life, this is like an almighty, amazing like piece of music by them. It really isn't. It's very technical. It reminds me a lot of like Power Ranger fight music at times, uh, which is subjectively a good or bad thing depending on how you feel about it. But I think this album has one of the best starts in a Broken Hope album with Wolf Among Sheep. The lyrics are straight wildin' and on par with Regurgitation and Mortal Decay. Um, Christ Consumed and Earth Burner also a killer, but after that, when you hear one song on the album, you kind of hear them all. Uh, War Maggot kind of has some cool stuff going for it, but I think that Flesh Grind took this technical formula and perfected it a year later with Seeds of Abysmal Torment, which Flesh Grind to me was always a Broken Hope cover band. It's just some songs I loved in high school haven't aged well, like Necrophilacia or Chemically Clastrated. The more I listen to it, the more just like, I don't know, just kind of like lazy and kind of the... Um, song structures to me. Um, the first return af album after the hiatus, Omen of Disease. Uh, people hate on this one. Honestly, I think it's one of the stronger albums in their catalog. Not many bands in the genre can come back and make good albums. I mean, you have bands like Immortal Suffering and Afterbirth who also did. And I think Broken Hope are right up um, with them with this one. Um, especially with a new singer, Tar, but I think Damien does a super well job with this. The The vocals are a little foreign in the normal Broken Hope sound, but I mean, I love his vocals here. I love his vocals in his previous band, Gorgasm. Uh, I, I mean, I even have a pulverizer, pulver, pulverizer press of Stab Wound Intercourse. Um, not the biggest Gorgasm guy, because I like more of like the New York style, you know, pyrexia and internal bleeding and all, but you know, I, knew, I know some stuff like fucking the viscera, but I mean, to me, it's just a brutal ride from start to finish with this album and a warm welcome back from the band. Uh, Rendered in the Lord and Ghastly also have those Power Ranger riffs, but this time it works surprisingly well and a huge improvement over the previous album, Grotesque, and yes, even better than Repulsive, in my opinion. A lot of people listen to this once and go back to Swamp or Bales, and to them, I really don't know why, because, I mean, this one's just great. Especially for um, the old heads who like the more traditional, old-school death metal sound. I mean, there's, like... I think like death sounding guitar parts in like Womb of Horrors. Um, the most recent album, Mutilate and Assimilate, I think it's pretty much just Omen of Disease, but more mature and even heavier and more centered in songwriting. The opening song, Meek Shall Inherit, starts off with those signature Power Ranger riffs that we've come to love in Broken Hope music. Uh, the title track, Mutilate and Assimilate, is themed after the thing. It also steals the main riff from their song, Chew the Stubs, off of Repulsive Conception. Uh, I don't know if that's intentional, but if not, I see what you did there, Jeremy. Uh, their bassist, Diego, also has a ton of moments that really shine throughout this album, and the vocals have just become more traditional and akin to that signature Broken Hope sound. Uh, Def, one of the best Broken Hope albums, but the other ones are just slightly even better, and pretty much after doing this list and rank, I've come to find that like all of Broken Hope albums are just really excellent, especially after all these years. It's just that some are just better than others, and like when I rank these, I'm not doing like best to worst. I'm kind of doing like best to least best, so to say, I guess. But um, yeah, that's my list. And uh, I hope you like my list and thoughts. And thank you for nerding out with me. And uh, also check out all the other bands that I mentioned in this video. You know, go back and um, check out some of the music because a lot of their music is just completely flawless as well. Um, if you want to see other lists you want me to do right in the comments and if you want to see uh other type of stuff you can always say that but uh also you can let me know your ranking if you disagree agree whatever you want but uh peace out